this video we're going to go over how to edit your astrophotography. If you want any tips on how to shoot them, then the previous video on my channel will give you all the information you need. What we're going to go through in this video are a number of different techniques. We're going to do a stack in Starry Landscape Stacker and we're going to briefly go over what you can do in Photoshop, which is a, a similar sort of technique. And then I'm going to show you how to edit in Lightroom slash Luminar. Really for astrophotography, you're only using sort of the develop sliders, like your contrast, your exposure, your tone curves. So if you use Luminar or Lightroom or any other sort of editing software that allows you to do that, it should be absolutely fine. So first of all, we're going to go through how to stack your images. Hopefully from the previous video, we've now got several frames of the same scene and maybe some lens cap exposures as well to really show where the noise is. So the first step to stack your images is to get them ready for starry landscape stacker or sequator, which is the the windows equivalent. So to pull out as much of the detail as possible we want to take all of the contrast out and up the exposure maybe half a step. It's not designed to look overly great right now. This is just to pull out as much information as possible for the software to do its thing. The other important thing to do is to turn off all noise reduction because you want the starry landscape stacker to do that for you. And then once you've done that, dead simple, we're just going to copy those settings onto the rest. And then once we've done that, we're going to export those files. Now it's important to do this as a TIFF because that's going to keep as much information as possible for the next part and make sure it's 16 bit as well. We're done with Lightroom for the moment. Next, we're going to go into Starry Landscape Stacker. First, we're going to find our stacked images, including the lens capped images and put them in. Because I was shooting on a manual focus lens, it doesn't actually know the focal length of the lens. So the full frame equivalent is 15 mil because I was shooting on 7.5. And then we're brought to this screen where there's a lot of dots. All this is doing is figuring out which part is the sky and which part is the landscape. So first of all, I'm going to erase any dots that are on the trees. and then change to add dots. So I can go down to the horizon. And one thing I've learned is to get as close as you can to the trees because it can make your image blur if you're not quite accurate with this. So try and be as accurate as you can with the stars. And then press find sky. And that's not actually too bad. Just going to make sure that all the branches, the little branches, are part of the ground and not the sky. And you could, if you were doing this in more detail, go into this part in between the trees. But I'm not going to bother just now. And then just check that everything that is sky is picked. And that looks pretty good to me. And that's all we need to do, really. Align and save. Let the software do the magic. And this is the stacked image and just to show you sort of what it's done that's one single exposure and that's the stacked version at the pixel level so it's figured out which bits are stars and which bits were noise and i think you can agree that that is a dramatic difference now you can see here that um it's very hard to go around um, things that don't have a defined edge, like the tree branches. You can spend a lot of time masking it out, but just for this example, I've, I've just left it as it is. Hopefully no one's going to be pixel peeping this one too much. So there we go. Time to export. Oh, just one more thing. You can choose different types of algorithm to see what works best for your image. And for me, it's always been um, mean or median. So we're done with Starry Landscape Stacker now. And we're going to put the TIFF 
which saved in the folder with the rest of them, back into Lightroom for the final edit. Now in Lightroom, when it comes to editing this, you really need to think of it as two halves. You want to get the sky looking good and sort of the foreground looking good and both of those things take two different settings. So I'm going to try and get the sky looking good and ignore the foreground to begin with. I know that's a bit weird, but trust me. <laughs> I'm a complete noob at this, trust me. First of all, we're going to get the white balance right. And I do this by usually ramping up the saturation and the vibrance to full. And we're looking for the mixture of the yellow and the blue in the image. And when it's sort of a mixture of both, you're about right. And the same with the tint. If it's a mixture of magenta and green, if it's too far green, you know it's wrong. If it's too far purple, you know it's wrong. If there's a mixture of both in the image, then you can get a much better white balance. So if you compare the original to where we're at now, the white balance is much better. Probably should have done that in the first section, but doesn't really matter too much because you can do it here. So we're going to bring the highlights down and the shadows up slightly, but not too much because we don't want to put too much noise back into the image. And we're going to add a bit of clarity as well. And the main part of, of how to push and pull these sorts of images comes from your tone curve. And it's completely different to what I would usually do. And it looks a little bit just looks a little bit like that but bringing the blacks back we can pull the blacks down a little bit more actually now as i was saying about the foreground the foreground obviously doesn't look great in this image but the sky is looking better you can pull out some extra detail by adding a little bit of the whites and bringing the blacks down i bring the blacks down quite a lot and we'll bring the clarity up a little bit more so that's where we started, and this is where we're at. Not great yet, but we're getting there. Now we can add some noise reduction in because we've already cleaned up our image through stacking it. So I'm just gonna turn all of those on in varying degrees. And then the main way that I personally get sort of the clarity out of these sorts of images is by using the adjustment brushes. So first of all, for your Milky Way sort of strip, I like to up the clarity and the exposure ever so slightly and just very loosely paint over the centre of the image with a very soft 100% feathered kind of brush. And then to emphasise that further, you can do the opposite on either side of it. So I like to bring the blacks down a little bit, the clarity down quite a lot, add some extra noise reduction and with a big brush. We're going to do that side and then the opposite side. Now this can sometimes end up quite patchy. So it's a good idea to look at what's going on in the preview over here. That gives you a sort of bird's eye view of everything. And you can see where the patches are and try and smooth them out. So that's where we started and this is where we are currently. In terms of colour editing, I like to take a lot of the greens out, a lot of the yellow, and the orange, but up the blues and the magentas and the purples. You can really mess with what sort of colour scheme you want to go with by moving the blue sliders. And I find a little bit of secret sauce in these sorts of edits is to actually do some negative dehaze. So when you add the dehaze, it brings in a lot of the sort of further away stars and makes them just as bright and it can just be a little bit like star soup. And if you pull them away, obviously it goes very mushy, but if you pull it away ever so slightly, I think it can clear up the image a little bit. And as I mentioned before, it is a edit of two halves. You want to have one edit to concentrate on the sky and one on the foreground. So in the foreground, I want to up the shadows, bring down the saturation, add in a lot of noise reduction and maybe make the white balance slightly cooler. And I'm going to paint a little bit back into the tree. So the foreground is looking much better. And I like 
this is a four by three micro four thirds crop at the moment but because some of these star trails are a little bit messy over here i'm just going to reposition it and reframe it like that so that was the stacked before and here is the after so for all intents and purposes that's done but if you want to tinker further you can do my favorite trick in the world which is right click edit in photoshop make sure you click edit with lightroom adjustments and what that will do is open it in lightroom uh, in photoshop sorry and then all you need to do is close it again and make sure you save it and now in Lightroom, what that has done, that is the original image with all of the edit on. This has sort of bounced down all of your progress and reset all of the sliders. So you have more pull, you have more opportunity to mess. And at that, this point, if you wanted to add in some sort of, um, oh, that's minging. <laughs> if you wanted to add in some sort of um, preset, where you can mess with the colours a little bit more, here is a good opportunity to do so. I did mention at the start of this video that I would show you how to do this in Photoshop. I didn't do this successfully using Photoshop automation. Every time I did it, it ended up blurring. So I will link a video tutorial below to show you the principle behind how you stack in Photoshop. But I'm just going to leave this in here as an example of what you have to go through in Photoshop if the automated stacking that lines up all the images doesn't work. You have to literally go through every single layer and manually try and make the stars align. <laughs> make the stars align. This is a 25 minute process on six images. Remember that I said like preferably a minimum of 10, preferably a minimum of like 30 if you want to do it, you know, if you want to go ham. So 25 minutes it took for me to line up these six images. Basically what I'm saying is use Sequator or Starry Landscape Stacker because it does all of this for you. But I'll show you the final result just using Photoshop now. This is the Photoshop stacked image which I think has really cleaned up and looks very well very well done um, we're just gonna edit this and see what we can come up with so with this image I edited it using exactly the same techniques as the previous image and it had exactly the same amount of data and, and noise reduction um, the main benefit of using something like Starry Landscape Stacker is saving yourself half an hour of painstakingly sort of lining up layer after layer after layer. The end results are very similar, so you can do it in Photoshop, it is just an absolute pain in the backside. And editing using this technique in Lightroom, using these slider settings, should work just as well on a single exposure versus a stacked exposure if you can't be bothered stacking you will just have more noise to deal with. So I hope you found that useful. Check out the links below for the software and if you have any tips or tricks that you've tried, do let us all know and we can all learn together. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.